You know, you guys, to be honest with you, if we were to go ahead and select one team above the rest that has seemed to receive a majority of criticism and overreactions at least as to how they started their 2022 season, while the case could definitely be made for multiple different NFL teams, I don't think anyone fits this example better at this point than the Cincinnati Bengals. Because after following one of the most ridiculous playoff runs we have seen in the Super Bowl era, at least when you're considering pre season expectations, this very young and promising Bengals team also saw themselves with more salary cap space in the prior offseason than they seemingly knew what to do with, and long story short, were able to fill some of the biggest holes that were seen on this team from last year, specifically within their offensive line. And well, I'll just say that with the increased expectations this season, the start to the year for the Bengals wasn't really what everyone was expecting. However, I will say that through the good, the bad, and everything everything in between that's been seen so far out of Cincinnati, that with what they've been doing as of recently, specifically within their last couple of games, might just turn into a scarier final product than almost anyone could have anticipated. One sec though guys, if you haven't yet, don't forget to like the video if you do enjoy, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to never miss another NFL video. Love you guys. We've been going strong all season so far, and we're just going to continue to come out with brand new NFL content every single week. So just trust me, you don't want to miss it. But anyway, to get back on topic with the Cincinnati Bengals, who, while I think it's safe to say in general when speaking about this team, that the defensive side of the ball was absolutely an area that improved on the Bengals, and it was definitely something to keep an eye on. Still though, if you were to also say on top of this, that this side of the ball was the main reason the Bengals were even close in the majority of their games to start the year, which is mainly tied into the dip in offensive production seen early on in the year, if you were to tell most people this in the preseason, I don't think many of them would have believed you. Because, well, I think this reasoning should be rather obvious, considering Cincinnati lost almost nobody crucial within their offense from the year prior, and in that same year, again after being projected to be one of the worst teams in the NFL posted the seventh best passing offense, which was led by what many people would and should consider one of the best young offensive groups the game has to offer right now. And I mean, sure, while pass protection and the run game were issues within this offense and definitely areas that needed to be addressed, again, that's really where the majority of their salary cap went to kind of perfect the overall look of this offense going into 2022. And of course, while everything on paper looked great for the Bengals, the actual result on the field to start the year wasn't necessarily the same. And with this, I'm also not trying to say by any means whatsoever that the offense was a complete dumpster fire to start the year. It's just that with how the offense was actually operating, it was presenting many questions as to how this team would actually be able to reach the full potential that we knew they were capable of. And while I should also say that what's been seen out of Cincinnati over their last couple of games still might not even be the peak performance of their offense, which could also be the scariest part, they've seemingly been able to do a complete 180 flip in what they're doing this season in a week-to-week -week transition. And yes, while I also know that some people are going to discredit the competition that Cincy has had over the last couple of weeks, to be honest, no matter who you're going up against in the NFL, the numbers that they've been putting up are definitely nothing to look by. And while the recent success shown can definitely tie into a number of different reasons, one of the biggest ones, at least from what's been seen, is this offense transitioning into a much more simplistic approach in how to operate, which also ties into the absurd amount of plays we have seen them run out of the shotgun over the last couple of weeks. Because once again, to touch back on the offensive line, while the entire right side of this unit is a completely new face to not just this offensive scheme, but also the team in general, regardless of how skilled their acquisitions actually were, it was undoubtedly always going to take some time for them to actually gel together. And with actually sending Joe Burrow back into the shotgun, while this is definitely going to give opposing teams more of an impression you're going to pass the ball if they didn't have it already with your below average run game, I guess, the positives are definitely outweighing the negatives so far, and the actual
actual firepower of this offense is finally starting to be unleashed. And if giving Burrow more time in the pocket wasn't enough to take this offense to the next step, even through the first couple of games this year when they were struggling, we are finally starting to see the highest level of versatility within the passing game that again, most people wanted to believe could consistently happen, but we weren't just quite sure when we'd actually see it happen. And with this, I'm referring to the spread out usage of their top three wide receivers in Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Because as we've seen in the past, when this offense is firing on all cylinders, it's pretty difficult to find a secondary in the entire NFL that can keep up with all three of these guys. And as most of you know, while this three-headed monster was definitely a threat last year as well, it more so took on the look of a one-headed monster in 2021, as Jamar Chase got a majority of the targets while Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins did a lot of dirty work behind the scenes. And I'm saying this in the sense of Jamar very clearly being their go-to guy and overall big play threat. And on the contrary, so far into this season, while again, I know there is a lot of games left to be played throughout the 2022 campaign, while the targets clearly still favor Jamar Chase, it feels like T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd are finally being more involved in this offense than what we've seen in the past. I mean, I have seen people make the case so far this year that out of Jamar, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd, that any one of them could make a valuable wide receiver one on about half of the NFL teams in the league right now. And I know, while that might sound absurd when hearing it for the first time for some of you, it's really not as crazy as you might originally think. And sure, while it's very unlikely we ever see either T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd jump Jamar Chase in production while they're all together on Cincinnati, it has already clearly been proven time and time again that any one of these guys can step up any given week and be the top target that you can confidently trust. And to be honest, that is something many teams around the league would absolutely kill to have at this point. And then also to kind of focus on the sole operator of this offense in Joe Burrow, who after his first game of the season left many people questioning if we were about to see a massive sophomore slump. I'll just say that for anyone who was trying to make a story out of this, he has very quickly shut you up since then, especially when you look at the numbers. And I mean, sure, similar to the entire Bengals team, Burrow has definitely had some ups and downs throughout the year thus far, but there is absolutely no reason to think he's not just going to continue to improve with how this offense has been elevating. And then to touch on the run game once again as well, while I don't think anyone is going to be anticipating anything crazy from this aspect of the offense, it's also something that while it doesn't necessarily look the best right now, is only going to continue to get better as the offensive line improves together as well. And then, again, there's the defense of this team that has exceeded the expectations of many so far, especially in the passing aspect. I'll just say that from top to bottom, this Bengals team is far better than what their record projects, and if they're able to continue the small glimpse of production that we've seen over their last couple of games, time will only tell what they might be able to accomplish. But of course, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But with everything that we've mentioned so far regarding the Cincinnati Bengals, I am also extremely curious to hear what you all have to think about their situation. So please let me know in the comments what has been the most surprising aspect to you about everything you've seen from the Bengals so far this year, and also what is the biggest area on this team that you feel they need to improve the most. But again, you guys, if you haven't yet, don't forget to go down below and leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and of course, subscribe while you're down there. Like we mentioned, brand new NFL content is just going to continue to come out week by week, so again, you do not want to miss it. But also, I just wanted to say thank you so much to each and every one of you out there for watching. I appreciate you all more than anything. You all know this, and I will see you guys in the next video.